the people I meet because uh, that is what we are here for, basically. Coming all the way from India, the intention is not to preach, not to teach, but to share. To share the experiences that we have had in India. The intention is that what we have done in the last 20, 25 years, can Africa, especially Mozambique, can you do it in 2-3 years? Because we actually do not have much time in hand. If we want to change, we change now. If we do not want to change, we decide now. That is the intention. So, speaking with youngsters, uh, I, I like to share my thoughts with youngsters when I meet them across uh, conferences or, or even in public transport. What I have learned is address the question upfront with address the problem upfront with three simple questions: why, what, and how. Being here since the last two days, I have realized that we are actually probing around a lot of questions, a lot of solutions have been shared from the stage. And in my short presentation, I will address it in three simple questions. Why? Why cotton? Why sustainable cotton? Why the transition? What? What do we need to do to transit safely? And how do we do that to be successful and profitable? So, before starting my presentation, I will start uh, with a shloka in Sanskrit language. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, ma kashit dukhbhag bhavet, om shanti, shanti, shanti hi. If we need peace for ourselves, we need to give peace to others. If we need happiness for ourselves, we need to give happiness to others. Similarly, if we need profits for ourselves, we need to share those profits with others. Others. That is the intention of getting into sustainable agriculture. Let us start. Can somebody handle the presentation? Yeah. Why? Next slide. Why cotton is so important for a country's economy? First question, why? And why cotton? Cotton is perhaps the only crop in the world which is used for food, fuel and fabric. So all the three things, the pictures have been taken from ICAC website. You can see the utilization of cotton. We are not even utilizing 5% of the value that cotton is offering us. Being the only certified cotton valuer in India, Perhaps in the world, I can vouch that there is a long journey ahead of us if we were to really uh, realize the intrinsic value of cotton ahead of us. Let's go. Can cotton make or break a country's GDP? Is it possible that cotton is so important for the economy of a country that it can make or even break? India is an excellent example. 2021. The year after COVID-19, we began our journey opening up industries, opening up operations, opening up retail outlets and the spread between cotton and yarn was fantabulous. Normally, the honeymoon lasts for 2-3 months. Here, the honeymoon lasted throughout the year 2021. Everybody was earning, the farmers were earning, the industry was earning, the retailers were earning, traders, exporters. Everybody was earning. It was such a fantastic year, 2021, because cotton prices in India were cheaper compared to the world. Organic cotton premiums fell from the 2021 level of 35,000 to a candy, that is about $4. They fell down by about 20, 25-30%. So everybody was earning and it, the going was very good. The balance sheets changed favorably, but 2022, a nightmare. The crop of India fell by about 20% from 5.95 million tons to 5.35 million tons. Indian cotton prices reached the historic highest level ever in the history of Indian cotton. An increase of 100% in one year. Textile industry was compelled to drastically reduce the consumption of cotton. Please understand, in the world, 
the ratio of cotton to synthetics is 7 uh, 30 to 70 in favor of synthetics in india it is reversed it is 60 40 in favor of cotton and for the first time in history mills were compelled to reduce the consumption of cotton and divert to synthetic fibers or other man made fibers so the next slide what is wrong why the honeymoon ended in a nightmare so soon within a year the obvious question are what went wrong with the textile industry? And second question is, what led to the slowdown in the agriculture sector when even the farmers were earning in 2021? For getting the right answers to these questions, we need to understand the economics of cotton. To determine the right economic value of cotton, which could secure both consumers and producers. Since two days and throughout the year, Whenever I am being questioned, it is mainly about what do you think about the price of cotton. We are fighting a price war which we can never win because price is actually not in our hands. It is totally demand and supply. What is in our hand is value. How do we create value for the product, for the service, for the brand that we stand for, for the country that we stand for. So, these issues can be resolved only by engaging farmers directly the supply chain through farmer, producer organization, clusters, groups, companies that is what I shared yesterday and involvement of textile industry in integrated projects. We need buyers to succeed. We need buyers to make profits. We need buyers simply to sell with public-private partnership like uh, the Reinhardt presentation share or through contract farming. That can also be a very viable option for both the farmers and the brands. Next one. Why cotton? so vital for India's economy. Coming from India, being born in a cotton farmer family, we get only 5 inches of rain in the village that I hail from. I hail from Kutch, which is the biggest district in India. The average rainfall is only 5 to 7 percent. We know how to grow cotton in arid weather. We have even faced a 7 year drought in our village. A seven years, seven years of no rainfall at all. Still, we continue to grow cotton since last 109 years. Because cotton is so vital to India's economy, it is not just a commodity but an asset for India. You can look at the farm exports of India recent to 50 billion dollars and cotton is one of the major component in those exports. Over 65 million farmers grow cotton in India in 120 lakh hectares of land, which is four times the land of China. Next slide, please. Cotton is world's number one natural resource for textile mills. We all know that. Yesterday, Kai shared only 1% cotton grown is organic in India, it's 2%. But present high cost of production, low yields, and uncertain market prices lead us to more pain as cotton farmers. That is why we are looking for solutions and sustainable solutions and organic cotton can be or can it not be such a solution? We will look into that. Next slide, please. The benefits of organic cotton cultivation or transition from conventional to organic. Can you see the signals? I will share two stories with you in one lineage. See the right hand signal, Sri Lanka, red signal. Some years back, the country declared itself we are going fully organic. We are stopping importing of all pesticides and anything hazardous to humans and environment. Today, Sri Lanka is facing the biggest economic challenge since its independence. Within three years, the country has gone from boom to bust. The Red Sea. What went wrong? Too fast. Without plan. Without taking the people, the farmers, the companies into confidence, the government just declared we are going wrong. Okay? Will not do. Will not work. It is not an overnight journey. Transition from conventional to organic. We need to understand that. So that's why I share a red signal. Against that, we have a green signal. India. Gradual transition. Since years we were growing organic cotton, used to growing cotton without pesticides in arid areas, but we focused on productivity first. From 2003 to 2009, the productivity in India nearly doubled, mainly because of introduction of BT seeds, technologies, 
and uh, awareness among farmers to grow more in less land. 2009 to 2017-18 was little bit more painful with stagnant yields, but then again we realized that we have to be different. So focusing on organic agriculture, now we are able to 2% grown from 1%, but 2% is also huge, being 50% component of world organic cotton supply. So the transition was slow, gradual, calculated, and planned. That is why I am showing the green signal. In Africa, you can start with the yellow signal, go slow, start with the help of a buyer, even in a pilot project, and plan your uh, produce, understand the cost, understand the certification, understand the premium system that works, because there is no exchange which shows the premium. The premiums can vary very drastically and can change overnight. So you need to be aware of the system, how these premiums work. And it is better to associate with the buyer when you start with in this journey of transition. The conditions in India and Africa are very similar. So I am sharing my experiences with you. Next slide. Proven economic impacts, starting with the farmers. What do we have for the farmers? If you can see these two slides. What we have is, we start with our Cotton Guru Pradarshan Khet. That is an evidence farm. In every project that we have, we have an evidence farm in which we do uh, best type of agriculture. We show the gap, good agriculture practices. We show how yields can be increased. We show how quality can be improved. And this is demonstrated to the farmers within the project on a very regular scale. Ideally on a weekly, sometimes on a monthly basis if it is a sowing season. So these things make the farmers believe if it can be done in our area, we can do it. Yields will not increase overnight. It takes effort, it takes time, and even compliances will not come overnight. But if you have a model, a successful model, the farmers will easily follow. Here, we train the farmers. We identify the lead farmers, the progressive farmers, and the second initiative that we give to the farmers is farmers train farmers. I standing in a court and, and teaching to the farmers will not percolate so much. Of course, we have to learn the languages to communicate. I have learned six languages communicating to the farmers because it brings us closer to the farmers. But ultimately it is, a, if a farmer stands up and say, I have succeeded in doing this, you can do it, it percolates very easily among the farmers. The third is the farmer school that we have. We, we run this course among the villages and it's a mobile type of an uh, arrangement. And again here, we are, the lead farmers tell it to other villages, other farmers, and, and they teach them. Then there is the exchange of farmers within the state. We, we exchange with delegations how, how the farmers would know that the uh, farmers of other states are eating higher yields compared to us. So this, this benefits for the farmers. Please, you have gone two slides ahead. You can go back. How do the farmers benefit from this? Back. Back. Going ahead. Yes, the obvious benefit to the farmer is first reduction in cost. The cost is reduced and that is what matters to them the most. The second benefit is they are trained in soft and hard skills. Cotton agriculture, especially organic cotton, cannot be the only source of income for these farmers. We need to sell other producers also. What they produce needs to be sold in the market. Even at fair market prices, fine for them. So that has to be done. We do that so that there is sustainable income and then there is skill, skill um, training for the farmers, focusing on the female farmers. They are very disciplined, they are fast to adapt and they are um, easy uh, to train also and they are skilled in uh, input um, manufacturing. So these are the benefits to the farmers. Now we come to the benefits to the buyers. We carry on uh, programs like Swatch Kapas Abhiyan or Clean Cotton Mission. Then zero effect, zero defect, that is zero effect on the environment and zero defect in the fiber, that is contamination control cotton produced organically. Then third is passion to farm. We do not engage with uh, fashion uh, brands 
upfront. We first invite them to a project, they come to the projects which are running, they have a look at what is happening, then we discuss to them, this is what we are doing, what better do you want, or is it the same that you are looking out for, and then we have a farmer orientation program where we speak to the farmers, this is what the brands want, this is what we are currently doing and this is what they want us to do additional to what we are doing. So then after there is a consent among the farmers and the brands, we start start the projects, that is why fashion to farm. And the benefits to the buyers obviously are interrupted supply. The buyers need to be assured that you are in a set. That you will get this much amount of cotton certified with this agency to this extent. So uninterrupted and assured flow of contamination controlled and certified organic cotton and continued journey towards sustainable environmental goals. These do matter for the brand. They matter a lot because they are looking for carbon footprint, they are looking for finances and the finances will come only with these um, sustainable goals that they achieve. Next slide. Examples, countries who have achieved prosperity with agriculture, USA. If you see the 2018 National Climate Assessment Report, farming is the key pillar to US economy. We have to learn US has not only grown by weapons, by agriculture also they have grown. US farms accounted for 136.7 billion contribution to overall economy in 2015, which is 1.4% of employment. Other countries, India, China, Brazil, they have grown through agriculture and a lot of opportunities we see for African countries here because we have core agriculture in nature, a lot of farmers, a lot of available land, which is an asset that the African countries have. Next slide. Cotton Guru stands from profitability, from sustainability. We do stand for sustainability, but not without profitability. It has to be profitable for the farmers, has to be profitable for the brands, has to be profitable for the environment that we live in. So this is a mission that we carry since many years and this is embedded in the minds of every farmer that we work with and every employee that works in our company in the five states of India to assist cotton farmers in improving yield and enhancing the quality of cotton, to assure the industry of uninterrupted supply of contamination control cotton and to promote cotton as the most viable option for plastic and paper, thus serving the environment. And the vision is unlocking the socio-economic potential of agriculture and cotton for global prosperity. I thank ICAC, I thank IEOM, I thank all of you for being patient throughout this presentation. Thank you.